Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tori. If you're new here, I am almost 38 weeks pregnant and I am finalizing my freezer meals for this postpartum period. And I wanted to do this video because I do them a little bit differently. So I'm gonna show you like three different methods of how I plan to feed myself and my family postpartum. I really do enjoy cooking. So a lot of my postpartum meals are me in the kitchen. This is my third child, so I don't know if this baby will like to be in the wrap with me cooking, but I really do enjoy getting in the kitchen just because it just gives me this like amazing uh, serotonin boost, I guess you could call it. So I'm going to take you along. I have about four or five recipes that I want to show you, and I hope this is motivating. I think that postpartum meals can be a little bit intimidating, and hopefully Hopefully you have a partner or a team behind you that could help you with these meals. There's no shame in ordering takeout, but we are on a extreme budget. So I really want to just get things in the freezer, get things together for this baby. So I hope you're excited. If you're new here, we'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. I make videos three to four times a week all about motherhood, lifestyle, and ways to make your life just a little bit easier when it comes to motherhood. So if you like that kind of thing, definitely hit the subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up, and let's get into the recipes. So, of course, this could not be a postpartum meals video without burritos. I'm making breakfast burritos, and yes, you can freeze these. I don't want all of my meals to be freezer meals. That's why I'm kind of changing it up here. But in my burrito, I'm going to do onions, peppers, some roasted potatoes, cheese, and, of course, eggs. You could add meat to this if you want, but I know how I feel in the morning, especially when I'm breastfeeding, and this is just light enough, but satiating enough for me to get to the next meal. I will say I snack in between meals, especially when I'm breastfeeding, but this is a good one. I have some tortillas as well as some good quality olive oil, onion powder, garlic powder. I do a little bit of salt and pepper, and then sometimes I throw some dill in there, but this time I did not. Please don't forget all of these recipes will be typed out in the description box for you. If you have any specific questions, just let me know in the comments. And then I'm going to take my black beans here and rinse them as best as I can just for digestive issues uh, that may come about but if you wanted to avoid that you could totally take some dry beans and soak them with about a fourth cup of apple cider vinegar that usually does it for me and that helps with digestion I read about it years back and I've used that method ever since I did not have time today so black beans in a can it is you saw that I diced some bell pepper and onions up I'm just frying that in a pan with a little bit of water and then I am doing some grass-fed butter here just because I feel like it just adds some extra oomph. So in my egg varieties here I have some duck eggs and that's not necessary but it is a higher source of protein. So nine grams versus that six grams that a chicken gives you and they do contain more vitamins than chicken eggs. So I need that, especially when I'm breastfeeding, you might hear that a lot. And I'm just putting as many as I can in here. Duck eggs are a little tricky for me to crack still. They have a tougher shell. So uh, when I have my faux nails on, I can poke right through there, but I don't have any on. So I think that's a good thing. Perhaps we will avoid the germs in the kitchen <laughs> this week, but I'm just stirring that up with a little bit of milk. You could use half and half, and then I'm just going to scramble them like you would any typical eggs. And then after this, all I do is add my black beans to the pan, and then this could be where you add your meat and just fry that up, let it mix together. And then you can also add your potatoes at this point. So after they have roasted at 400 for around 20 minutes, then I just add everything together. I slice my cheese into long strips just so I can put them in the burrito the way that I want to. You could also use queso with this. I've used cream cheese. And if you are plant-based, go ahead and use tofu or whatever alternative you want. If you are plant-based, I would suggest maybe garbanzo beans uh, just because tofu and soy and breastfeeding, I don't know about all that anymore. So I would suggest a, another bean, but that's just me. And then you could 
would use Kite Hill cream cheese, which is a really great alternative. It's made with cultured almonds. So it depends on your preferences. It depends if you can digest dairy, but these are going to be delicious. And I am making enough for my husband and myself. He will have a little bit of time off uh, postpartum with me, but not a lot. So he will probably blow through two of these burritos. So this will realistically last us for a week or two, but it's a backup because honestly, like I said in the beginning, I will have some time to be cooking. And that brings us to lunch when I have time, but not a lot of time. This this is my go-to. I make chicken or tuna salad. When I was plant-based, I made chickpea salad and I just have a can of chicken in there. I have some mustard, diced apple, green onion because I can't really digest regular onion. That's just me though. And then I, all I do is put some lemon pepper and then a little bit of the mayo in there. I mix everything together and that just becomes a really delicious plate that I like to serve with some extra apples. I like to do a healthy fat other than that mayo. Um, I like avocados. I do some cheese for protein and some whole grain crackers. Next up on the list, I did want to include a favorite from my husband because I enjoy it too, and it's going to be ham and bean soup. And I do it differently, but some people just call this plain pinto beans. I have great northern beans as well as dried pinto beans, and I'm putting that in the crock pot with a little bit of ham and diced onions. I went through and looked through all my dried beans. If you did not know, there could be rock particles in your bag, so always check if you can. And then I'm putting six cups of water in here, and I like to add a little more towards the end, but this is what it looks like. It is so simple and basic, but it's delicious. I like to serve it with collard greens, but you don't have to do that. And sometimes I just add an extra salad or something like that. So this is a nice side item, but it's also really good as a bowl, just hearty enough with some sourdough bread. So I like to have these. I take them and put them in gallon freezer bags and I just pop it out, put it in the crock pot with two more cups of water and that's how I reheat it. So very simple and again, another one of my husband's favorites. Next up is going to be my famous, uh, on the other channel, quinoa corn casserole dip, we shall call it. I don't know. I came up with it a while back and I love it. So we have bell pepper and onion there from the garden last year. I have about a half bag of frozen organic corn, and then I have some quinoa. So you don't have to use quinoa. You could use rice with this, but again, all the measurements will be in the description box. You're going to bring that up to a boil. You're going to reduce it to a simmer, give it a good stir, and then cover it for around 20 to 22 minutes. It depends on where you are in the world. But after that, you kind of just fluff it out and let it get going in the heat. And what I do is add just a little bit of softened cream cheese. So about four ounces there. And what you're going to do is mix that in together just to make sure it's nice and creamy. And then I also add sharp cheddar when I'm serving this. My favorite way to store this is in the freezer. And all I do is take two 12 ounce glass containers and I put those in the glass containers and then I pop them out whenever I need them. So I just reheat these at 400 for around 20, 25 minutes. And they're great. They're great for taco stuffing. They're great over nachos. They're great on top of a spinach salad. You can use it as a dip, but these are awesome. I really enjoy it. And I think they are perfect for postpartum. So that is going to do it today. I hope you all enjoyed this quick little video about some postpartum meals. If you want to see more cooking on the channel, this was just a little intro. I love to cook and I love to share my recipes with all of you. So if again, you want to see more cooking, maybe toddler meals, family meals, 
any of that fun stuff, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to film some cooking videos for you. I hope this was inspiring and showed you that postpartum meals don't have to be these big giant dump and go freezer meals. That certainly works, but it can be just simple ingredients that you have on hand. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out all of the ingredients in the description box and leave me an emoji or comment if you enjoyed. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye friends.